five, four, three, two, one. Hello friends, this is Ozian with Ozian Talks, and this is where I talk about things I love to talk about. Anyways, I would like to plead with you to give me a like and share and subscribe this. That'd be awesome. Leave some comments below after the video. Let me know what you think about the video. And so I'm going to do a response video to Dr. Nasser Karimian. I hope I pronounced that right. And he goes on and discusses about what he thinks identity means. And I obviously disagree and you're going to find out why. Don't be like those who forgot about Allah. And as a result, Allah made them forget about themselves. Okay, this already doesn't sound very encouraging. This requires that you presuppose that Allah exists. So his entire argument is about how he defines an identity through his beliefs about Allah. So the question you have to ask yourself is, how is it that the moment I forget about Allah, I'm therefore forgetting about myself? Okay, how exactly can you possibly forget about yourself? You could lose your belief in Allah, but you can't lose your belief that you exist if you're conscious and self-aware. Atheists are self-aware, so they haven't forgotten themselves. They know who they are, even if they can't articulate it well. What's, what's the correlation here? Well, the idea is that if you take a person who completely rejects the idea of a creator, you're kind of rejecting the idea of anything divine. You'll often hear the atheists say, I don't believe in God, I don't believe in any angels, and therefore I don't believe in the soul either. Definitely, I don't have any problem with that definition for my own atheism, but there are atheists that just deny the existence of a God. Some of them believe in souls, some of them believe in some type of higher being, which I think is synonymous with God, but they disagree and that's okay. Well, let's continue. Now, the moment you reject the idea of the soul, what are you left with? What is a human being? A human being is really just a product of two factors, nature and nurture. Now, your nature is what you're a result of because of your parents. Essentially, the sperm and the egg that produced your DNA, that produced your body. You have to admit that these things were not chosen. Nobody chose to be born you know, male or female or their race or any of these factors. Nobody chose their DNA and so therefore nobody chose their brain. Then if you look at nurture, did anybody choose where they were born or the first things they interacted with or the first things that they saw? No. So really, if you're just a product of nature and nurture, both of which you have not chosen, then you have to admit you don't have any choice. You don't have any free will. There's no contradiction in believing in free will and believing that there is no God. That's not a contradiction. I don't believe naturalism supports the idea of free will because I do believe superdeterminism is true. But you have things like Bell's theorem and quantum physics and stuff that people do use as arguments for free will. But I don't think even if that is true and superdeterminism is false, I don't get, think that gets you to the idea that it affects brain states in any way. I don't believe our thoughts are random in any way. So I personally don't believe in free will, but that's different from volition and making choices based on all those environmental and internal factors that we use to go into our decision-making and deliberation process. I call it volition, not free will. I call it um, deterministic choices, not free will choices. Now, what is free will? Essentially, it's your identity. Okay, he was doing very well up until this point. I think he had identity pretty well defined. And he should add that it's unique for each individual. Now he says it's about free will, our ability to make choices. Like what he thinks we're all robots, we all make identical choices, but that's not true because we're all unique. So we all make different choices. So that's not what identity is. He was correct the first time. Now he's wrong when he's trying to define it as our ability to make choices. When you think about how you identify somebody, you say, oh, this guy's a nice guy. 
Why is he a nice guy? Well, what you're really saying is that he makes nice choices. He chooses to be kind. He chooses to be generous, etc. These descriptions of an identity is based on choices. That's one part of what makes us who we are. That's part of our identity is how we make choices. That's not our entire identity. No one goes around and says, I identify that person solely by the way they make choices. No, we don't. We identify them by everything we visually see, everything we know about them. That's who they are, including the labels they assign to themselves, including their genders they have, right? That's their identity. It's not just their what choices they make or the ability to make choices. He's just way off base here. No one actually believes this. It's a really bad argument. And so the moment you remove the idea of a soul and remove the idea of choice, you remove the idea of identity as well. I mean, I already demonstrated how that's false, so no. I think an easy way of understanding this is by simply taking a look at Siri. Siri, right, on everybody's phone, doesn't have any free will. Now, even if it might appear that way, let's say theoretically, a child picks up a phone and that phone says, I am an atheist. Is this guy going on about the problem of consciousness? Like how we define something as being self-aware? That's a different topic from what free will is and our ability to make choices, right? Siri's programmed in a specific way to answer in a specific way. We have an ability to sort of self-program ourselves and we're all programmed uniquely. And is Siri was self-aware? Yes, I would identify Siri as a person. Regardless, Siri has an identity. You just called it Siri. Siri exists. It may not be a person. There you go too. Are you conflating person with identity, right? A rock doesn't have an identity. It does. A rock theist doesn't have an identity. Yes, you do. You're a doctor. Now, the moment that Siri said that, the child might think, oh, this phone has an opinion. This phone, you know, is an atheist. And what would you tell this child? You'd say, look, I understand that it might look that way because the phone spoke. Uh, but the reality is that there's factors that cause this. In other words, the phone was manufactured, it had a nature, it was manufactured in a, you know, factory, and then it was sold and somebody bought it and somebody typed in these words, I am an atheist, and that was its nurture, both of which, is this sounding familiar? Both of which, the nature and the nurture, Siri didn't choose. Correct, just like you were determined to make this obnoxious video right now. Just like Siri, your nurturing and your nature helped you, like I would say help you, it's hard to even talk about it sometimes, but those are why you were determined to make this obnoxious video. Thank you very much for proving my point. Thank you for proving Siri has an identity. You keep calling it Siri. And therefore, when Siri said, I'm an atheist, the reality is that she really wasn't saying anything. She's not even a she. And yet you still called her a she, an atheist, and Siri. It's like you identified it with some traits. Some of you might be thinking, why is this Muslim talking about beliefs in atheism? Well, you don't have to take it from me. You can take a look at the very famous Richard Dawkins and Lawrence Krauss. They're talking about how, from their perspective, there's no room for free will. Even Stephen Hawking, the famous physicist, has a quote where he describes human beings as having the illusion of choice. And I personally believe that they are correct, but I do know atheists who do believe in free will and they have arguments for why they believe in free will. It's not an incompatible position to have. You are wrong. In my experience, many atheists do believe in free will. Yeah, so you already knew that a lot of atheists believe in free will. I don't, but that's okay. It's not incompatible. Okay, the rest of the video is going into why he believes free will doesn't exist um, empirically. Great, so he actually sort of agrees, but he still has this feeling and intuition, of course, that free will ex exists, which I believe is an illusion. I believe it's a false belief, but 
free will is not incompatible with atheism, right? Atheism doesn't mean you're a naturalist or a physicalist or a materialist. You could be a dualist or an idealist or anything else like that. All it does is say, I do not believe in gods. That's it. Or you lack a belief in gods or you believe that gods do not exist. That's all atheism is. So the good doctor is just wrong in his analysis to say they're incompatible beliefs. And that's really it. And identity is unique to everybody. Identity includes your nature and nurturing includes the way you think about yourself and we can deliberate and we can make choices and we can make decisions but we are determined how we do make them based on external and internal factors if you want to hold on to some concept of compatibilism that's fine i don't think it's necessary usually this comes around about how we enforce moral oughts or how we determine what morality is and that's really a different subject too but identity is not your free will we all know that it's not your ability to make choices or how you make choices we all know that it's who you are everything about you if that includes free will then it does if it doesn't include free will it doesn't change who you are and how you define yourself and how the world defines you and that concludes my video the good doctor is just wrong on this subject, um, but that's sort of typical for these type of apologists. Anyways, uh, please like, share, subscribe my video, and please leave some comments. I appreciate them. I try to respond to them all. And until next time, bye-bye.